Alexio Viregaid and tonight I'm gonna show you how you can assemble a rendering sequence in order to get a movie file by using a free program and which is most professional. Yes, I'm talking about Nuke. If you never heard of it, this is the tutorial that you need to watch. So if you see here, I've got this nice fire animation going on and all of those images were assembled into one sequence. Now what's special about those images is that they contain a lot of information. Those files called OpenAXR, and if you don't know what is OpenAXR, you can type in Google and find out that OpenAXR is the most professional format in the industry in order to render sequences, render files, basically render movies. This is what they use in Hollywood. This format was uh, created, invented by Industrial Light and Magic. This company, you probably know, they don't need special introduction. Star Wars, Pirates of Caribbean, all of that stuff was probably rendered by using OpenXR. Okay, so you can read a little bit more about it. You need a bunch of plugins. Uh, Photoshop can handle it. But again, if you need to handle a sequence, there are a special program that's called Nuke and it's it costs a lot of money but thank god they have a free non-commercial version that you can use it's uh, limited of course it can render only uh, full hd 1080p nothing bigger than that but this is what we need basically in order to create our demo reel okay so back to our 3ds max as you can see here i've got the sequence of fire uh, from our VFX for Arc Viz uh, workshop that is going on right now. And I've created that preset to help students in order to understand fire better. So that's a basic scene here with, uh, with some HDRI image in order to save some time uh, because I don't want to have the entire scene, but I still want to have some realistic lighting and some reflections going on. So I'm using HDRI and I'm saving OpenXR format with a setup of full floating point 32 bit. That means my pixel got the most exposed point and the most underexposed point in one pixel. Basically, pixel depth is a floating point. This is what determines how much post production you can do in order to not really screw your image. Okay, so JPEG, 8-bit, PNGs, 16-bit, TIFFs can reach up to 32-bit, but OpenXR, I think, in my opinion, is the most professional format that it can include all that information. Not only that, if you render passes, like right here, you can add a bunch of passes for reflection, refraction, uh, ambient inclusion, global illumination, lighting. Later on, you can extract those passes inside Nuke and treat each pass individually. So you basically can create a pattern that you can replicate and use for other images, which is pretty cool. And uh, another cool thing here, I'm using NVIDIA AI Denoiser, yes, Artificial Intelligence Denoiser. So basically it understands materials and polish them accordingly we have also default very denoiser but in the new update 2.1 actually i think 2.0 uh, that was new nvidia introduced updated improved so we're gonna do some tutorials on that subject actually on that entire update there are more than 20 videos but that for our uh, very next guide we're gonna do the update next month Tonight, I'm just going to concentrate on rendering the sequence, which I already did with 2.2 gamma in and out and um, save this as OpenXR. As you can see here, I've got my sequence. Now I'm going to open my Nuke non-commercial version. Non-commercial, this one Nuke. They always update, so I still have the previous one. Uh, that got expired, so I have to just downloaded a new one and I'm ready to go. So here I get the message that it's restricted, I cannot do any custom scripts, and I'm limited to uh, full HD, 1080p, 
but this is what I need I don't need more than that and um, let's just drag and drop this guy right here and here our nodes so we can do sequence base like uh, similar to um, After Effects and Premiere and we also can do node based so basically this is my node based if I drag and drop my sequence here I can start working with my nodes so in order to see that that's my viewer right here I need to connect my sequence okay so that's my sequence right here if I double click on it here I can load it make sure you're loading the sequence and not single image okay um, all the configurations of that format is right here now let's start doing some work on my file okay so if I do right click just on that line I can start adding bunch of modifiers color correction a lot of things so if I if I do want to color correct I can click C open my color correction as you can see here it was automatically added into that sequence and now here I can start uh, manipulating my colors increasing decreasing the uh, intensity can add a little bit more contrast on the gamma I can do shadows so basically I can do really massive in detailed post-production for my highlights and uh, can be do a bunch of cool stuff let's see what else we've got let's let's do some time uh, wrap on this I like time wrap in other programs it's so hard to do but with this one it's so much easier so I'm gonna click on the time wrap and we can do uh, the curve editor and here we've got the curve so let's start running our animation and see how we can whoa that's a pretty cool effect look at that kind of slows down and then whoop, goes back again so we can entirely manipulate the whole the whole sequence here so we can really slow it speed it up at the beginning and then slow it now towards the end oh wow that's beautiful and it's really not messing it up it's you know not uh, making stuff look jittery you know like Premiere does or you know After Effects when you're trying to slow down some sequence it's got really nice work on that on those fire flames okay so let's go back to our node base and let's see what else we can put here can put a bunch of sharpen filters blur filters let's do sharpen on this and uh, we need to zoom in in order to see the effect happening better we need to connect that sharpen looks like it's not connected all right now we can see what we're actually doing here with our sharpen modifier all right so i encourage you guys to play around with this they have a lot of filters again i'm not a professional in nuke i know there are way more professional guys than me but you know i can do my stuff basically i can get the sequence do some basic color correction and export it out so now let's export that I'm gonna click W uh, and to get another writing node and then if I click on this here to save my file let's go and save it to uh, the desktop and here I'm gonna give a name nuke test and let's call it MOV I'm gonna click save you can see automatically uh, my MOV format was created with this new test name 
24 frames per second and uh, all right so everything's ready to go here when I'm ready I can click render and it shows me 0 to 109 that's what we're going to render I'm going to click OK and this whole thing you can see it's getting everything passed through and then exit on this writing node pretty cool stuff right so let's go to my uh, desktop I just installed Nuke so you can see all of that stuff was added and uh, voila our sequence is uh, ready to go you can see here with our color correction with our uh, time remapping on it with some cool uh, sharpening effect we've got our rendered sequence really well done okay pretty cool stuff and um, if you need to send it somewhere because this one actually comes out uncompressed and if we look at it at 65 megabytes there's another cool trick that you can do inside the QuickTime you can export and let's call it nuke test PB for play blast that's what we do in the animation we do play blast so that's uh, everything that's been exported from nuke is getting that PB name so just double click on those make sure they okay sometimes it's uh, it's not gonna render just because you didn't click on it I don't know it's a weird bug of uh, QuickTime but just make sure you click on those and just check them out all right when you're done click Save now my rendered sequence is going to be converted one more time but you can see here it's already got this if I click on export and on the options I forgot to show you that's the format that we're using H.264 that's the most universal format for the mp4s and, and MOV files very light and let's see how much it is 14 megabytes okay so that's easy to send to anyone if you want to get opinion uh, it's just another cool bro science trick to resizing your videos just by using QuickTime. Voila, here our sequence ready to be sent uh, for approval. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Test that out. Let me know what you think. This is Alex, your beer guy. Talk soon. Ciao.